There has been a huge amount of interest over the last few weeks about the subject that is Remote ID and it's hardly surprising when we're around the corner from the first real big launch of this in the United States. Now, I've had a number of people reach out and ask why I've not been talking about this and that is largely because I've been talking about this on and off for four years and really we're at the end of a road that started a long time ago and whilst the rules have moved around a bit, the end fundamentals are the same, that you are going to need to have a drone that transmits a signal that will tell people where it is, tell people where the pilot is to be able to fly legally. Now this obviously is a very touchy subject for many people. In this video I'm going to share with you my thoughts on Remote ID first of all. We're then going to talk a bit about the subject of hardware, where I think FPV will end up with regards to this and then I just want to touch on a little bit of a controversial subject and that is the promotion of getting around Remote ID from content creators because I'm also seeing some interesting comments posted around the place and the reality is this there are going to be people who want to comply there are going to be people who won't comply and there's going to be people in the middle who don't know if they should and we all have a responsibility to make sure that the information we're putting out is correct but that doesn't mean we shouldn't talk about ways that people may be able to get around regulations or even if they choose to not comply now to start I'm going to quickly share with you my thoughts on remote ID because it's fairly simple. I personally have no issues with an aircraft transmitting encrypted data. What I have an issue with is my aircraft transmitting trackable data that is identifiable by anyone including the position of the home point. I fundamentally believe that transmitting especially the home point's location of the pilot is opening him up to risk. It pretty much will end the ability for a commercial operator to operate as a sole entity. He is always now going to need to have someone else with him to be able to secure the landing area because you're now sending a large signal out there to everyone that this is where I am and as a result of that your risk assessments are going to have to change and you're going to have to ensure that you're able able to secure your landing area at all times and you're not easily going to be able to do that when flying on your own. Furthermore, again, I do not agree with the fact that this data should be transmitted open and available for everyone to see, for everyone to track and then for that information to be used against me, say through cloning or any other method. However, the reality of the situation is this, it was four years ago we started screaming about this and today it is coming. There is going to be laws around this in the US, Europe and other countries and the reality of the situation now is not if it's going to happen, the reality is if you're going to comply or not. Now, compliance is really simple in the sense of you're going to have a law that tells you you're going to need to do something and it's going to be down to you to then make the decision if you're going to do that. Whether it's like any other law that you may find in your country or region, whether that be speeding, whether it be anything else, it's down to each individual person to decide if they want to comply with this or not. From a hardware point of view, things are fairly simple because all of the ready to fly stuff that you're likely to buy from DJI moving forward will be Remote ID compliant and we're really not going to have any issues migrating over to Remote ID on our FPV drones because there are going to be lots of really small Remote ID modules available. The hardware and being able to comply on this is really not going to be a problem. It's going to be a minimal cost in the end, even though maybe $80.00. It's not a huge amount of money in the grand scheme of things and the reality is from a technical standpoint from compliance you're not going to be having any issues. It's really going to come down to choice more than capability. Now with regards to DJI's off the shelf drones we do actually have a bit of an understanding of what the situation is. DJI have just updated a chart on their forum which tells us what the situation is with regards to remote ID on their drones. All of their modern stuff like the Mavic 3 3 series as well as the Mini 3 Pro is all compliant and that includes the DJI Avata. However, a number of their older drones like the Mavic 2 series, the Phantom 4 Pro or even the DJI FPV drone are not compliant. However, they have committed to bringing firmware for them by the end of the year. 
Here and now, though, many of those older models will not be compliant at the point of the new rules coming in, and you may have to wait before getting that firmware. I also want to put out a very big caution to people about that new firmware and I would strongly advise fully understanding what it entails before updating. There is a very real chance that this firmware will not be downgradable and you need to understand what the implications are of installing this firmware on older drones such as the Mavic 2 series before you do it because it may back you into a corner and actually force you into doing things you may not want to do and it may actually be better in some scenarios scenarios to fit an external module than actually install the DJI firmware. It has been the case many times that when DJI update their firmware on older models they give on one hand and they take away on the other and I strongly advise caution on understanding what exactly they are going to implement with regards to remote ID on those models before doing the update because once you've done it you probably won't be able to go back. FPV things are also quite interesting I absolutely see a situation where DJI could add remote ID to O3 for instance through a firmware update it's basically the same hardware as the Avata there is technically no reason O3 can't transmit will they do it though that remains to be seen they could easily though take GPS data from the MSP stream use that as part of a remote ID solution giving you support in O3 and actually I don't think that's a bad thing if a user wants to be able to do it with regards to the others like Avatar HD, HD0, I don't really see them getting involved in this. DJI is about the only company I do see doing something, but there is lots of low cost modules coming onto the market and you're going to see a lot more of them propagate over time as well. And as I've already said, being able to comply with this is really not going to be the issue. It's more than going to be about choice. Now, as I mentioned, we're likely to see products from DJI all comply and it is going to be interesting what we see from the bind and fly manufacturers such as iFlight and others whether they're going to be shipping products that need to comply will they comply or will you end up buying products that aren't quite fully built that situation isn't clear today but again fundamentally I really don't see there being a problem with regards to being able to comply there will be plenty of hardware available it will be fairly cheap and we're even seeing some really amazing things develop like this new project in Express LRS which is looking at trying to bring support there too and you're going to see support for remote ID propagate across a lot of hardware and again this really won't be a difficult thing to do. Now the interesting subject in all of this for me is around the choice that each user has. There are people who are going to say it's law therefore you must comply. There are people who are going to say ignore the law do what you want. The reality is really simple for me. As a content creator, my job will be to provide you the information you need to make an informed decision. I really won't be touching too much on the laws themselves, but what I will be talking about in the future is the hardware. We will be showing you the hardware, demoing how to fit it, but also talking around ways that you may be able to disable that if you want to as well because at the end of the day it is not my job to enforce the laws of the government and there are many users out there who want to be able to do things with their hardware that it may not be designed to do and as long as you know the legal implications of that the decision then is yours. What we can't have though is people starting to say that creator is doing bad things or you shouldn't talk about how you get around these things because the very simple reality is this. There are millions of videos online of people showing you how to do things you shouldn't do. It is not a creator's responsibility to ensure that the information he is providing is always compliant with the law. The information he is providing needs to be open, honest and if it isn't doing what the law requires, it then should be said as such. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't be making those videos. There are videos by some of the largest tech channels online, such as Linus Tech Tips, showing you how to set up emulators to be able to play Nintendo games, or lots of other things, like using the Flipper Zero to do all sorts of dodgy stuff, like change the fuel station pricing, or hack people's systems, like many of these devices can do. 
A creator making a video showing you how to get around something is not a bad thing. At the end of the day, it is down to each person to make an informed decision about what they want to do with regards to the law. There are many people that break the law on a daily basis, whether that be speeding, choosing not to pay things or whatever it might be. But it doesn't mean we can demonize people who then show you how to do it. In the end, remote ID is coming. We all have to accept that and all we have to do is make a choice if we want to comply or not. And it's really simple for me because it's not even as black and white as if I'd want to comply. It's if I want to comply in a certain situation or not. It really will not be black and white of I'm never going to fit a module or I am going to fit a module. It's really going to come down to each person deciding where they're flying, what they're doing and if they want that flight potentially tracked and then make making the decision that they make based on the information they have, maybe knowingly choosing not to comply with the law, but that isn't necessarily meaning that they're a bad person either. At the end of the day, many people break laws on a daily basis. There are reasons why many laws have fines because they're not actually deemed a criminal act. Instead, they're deemed something that shouldn't be done, like speeding, yet technically it's against the law, yet it is normalised. So in the end, we don't need to get too het up over all of this. Really, it comes down to make sure that you understand what the law is, when it comes in, and what your legal obligation is to comply with that. Then make yourself informed about what your options are, what the hardware choices are, what you need to do, and make sure you're informed about what options there are if you don't want to do that, and then make your choice. No one, though, should be harassing anyone for complying, not complying, showing how to comply, showing how not to comply. In the end, we all need to just work together to try and get through whatever this is. And my personal opinion is I think this will fade over time. I do not see remotely the capability in place to comply with this overall with regards to the government being able to force it. Yes, there will be some very nasty test cases, but in the end, like many things that we've seen in the past, like Ken Heron said about CB licenses, there's been dog licenses, these things come and go. And if I was a betting man in five years, things will look very, very different. And it might not remotely be as draconian as it feels today. So for me, what I'll be doing is making content on it in the near future. We'll be talking about what options are available for Ardra Pilot, options available for Beta Flight. I'll be showing you some of the hardware, but I'm also going to be showing you how to get around some things as well and some people may not like that but that is the reality of what we do here but also the reality of what everyone does there is no reason that we should not be talking about how to minimize your risk and exposure to this regardless of what the law says anyway that's it from me on this one let me know what you think in the comment section stay safe i'll speak to you soon